this Labor Day. HomeDepot.com is your one-stop shop for all things decor with up to 30% off furniture, mattresses, home decor, and kitchenware. Online, it's a Labor Day savings event. Out there, it's a whole new way to enjoy your space. Whether it's finishing touches or a total transformation, find everything you need to make your home feel more like home at HomeDepot.com slash decor. Free delivery on select items, $45 or more, U.S. only, valid through September 15th, 2021. Ten, nine, eight. Ignition sequence has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. You have entered untold radio AM. And now broadcasting from a secret location, your hosts, Joel Sturgis and Doug Hychek. And welcome to this edition of Untold Radio AM. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis. Right along with me, as always, is Mr. Doug Hychek. Yeah, yeah, that, that's his name, Doug Hychek over <clears> there. <throat> I'm just messing with you. Uh, senility setting in. I know, I know. I was gonna do a senility joke because I'm one year older and can't remember sh- anything anymore. Yeah, and so yeah, that was gonna be the joke. But you you're know. still a child, Joe. You're I'm still a child, he says. What? I guess it's a matter of perspective. You, yeah, you because know, I am the oldest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, it's true of that. <clears throat> and and so yep. you know. I am 47 years old, and I'm climbing that ladder, and and uh, yeah, yeah, just a birthday, man, just a birthday. But thank you. I can but tell thank you, though, you for... between 47 and 60, it's like, boom. Really? You know, that's the thing. Why does it seem like our life goes by faster the older we get? Time goes by quicker because every minute is, you know, less of a percentage of your life. So a day when you're yeah. 10 is a huge percent of your life. But when you're 60, sure. <clears> it's <throat> a tiny, tiny percent. Because you so remember when respect. you were a kid, just, 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 for a pers- just for an example for me, do you remember when we were kids, summers seemed like they would last forever? What? You know, what would summers. Last oh, summer. Yeah. Summer. You know, when you're a kid, you went on summer break. It seemed like it lasted forever. Summer. It was great. Now, like, for instance, this summer, it's already over. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't even feel like it started, but it's already gone. Yeah. We're what? In August 23rd? 5th. Yeah. 5th. 5th? No, we're not. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's August 25th. We're already knocking the door. September. Next thing you know, it'll be a trick or treat time, and then the snow will be falling. There you go. That's your year in a nutshell. Never going to freeze for about six months going, holy shit, when, when is this ever going to warm up around here? It'll finally warm up. Summer will hit. We'll have 10 minutes of, oh, my God, this is great. And then we go right back in the snow. There's your year in Minnesota in a nutshell. God, it is August 25th today. It is. Great. It is. Yeah, September. Yeah. Five days, six days, September, and then Labor Day weekend. And then, yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. start turning color and. Then next thing you know, it will be, um, it, it was, wow, yeah, sorry about that. I did not turn my phone off, by the way. That beep was my cellular device going off. Uh, yeah. I think we should have a yeah. thing where you have to pay a fine. Oh, really? You know, you've well, left I yours on plenty of times. I I don't know, man. I think it's like I, 20 I bucks. Know. Okay, from now on, 20 bucks. <laughs> and I... I'm twenty dollars gonna... every time. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You should have to pay a hundred dollars every time you call one minute before showtime. No. Or 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 mm-hmm. or three hundred dollars every time, you know, you're I was, late. Joel, I was two minutes today. You're, so that means you only have to pay twenty five dollars. I doubled my safety margin. You, you did. You, you you did. So, but anyhow, what a say thank you to everyone wish me a happy birthday today and um <clears throat> yeah yeah well thank you guys i appreciate it and birthdays are all right and they're better when they're someone else's i'm throwing that out there right now and uh 
We got a lot of great stuff. We got Lon Strickler coming on the show tonight. We're going to be talking about winged creatures, cryptids that fly, man. And they're real, Joel. They are real. Well, you know, you've seen one live in living color. You you, tell my story. I'll tell my story. You will. I I think that every week you tell your story. Oh, shut up. I do. (laughs) For years, I didn't tell anybody. (laughs) Well, you're making up for lost time, is what you're doing. (sighs) That's You know, they are real, and I thought it was a bunch of BS. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never seen one. For myself, but I don't doubt their existence. Well, that's good, because then you would be calling me a liar. <laughs> I I would never call you a liar, Doug. I would never, well, never. The problem is, <sighs> no. okay, here's, here's the problem. So I see this thing, and I'm the Monster Quest guy. Yeah. I can't tell anybody that, that what, I, what I saw. Did you tell any friends though? In you know, in the background, sure, you know, perhaps. you, you well, know, get it off your chest, kind of thing. Your close confidants, you know, your inner circle. Oh, Lon was the first person I told. Really? Yep. You called him up, woke him up, and said, "Lon, got him right out of bed." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could see you doing that because you don't sleep. I didn't last night much. Boy, I'll tell you, today was no. Went to bed four thirty. Got yeah. up at eight o'clock, I suppose, which isn't yeah. real early, but it's early. Yeah, bed at four thirty. Yeah. Seems early. Well, you were you went to bed at four thirty in the morning. Yeah, and then got up. I was getting up like at six a.m. Get ready to go to work. Yeah, I was just probably so. falling asleep. Yeah, yeah. What were you doing last night? There, you up that late? I just had a ton of odd odds and ends to do. Emails, be you know, behind on emails, and I finished. Totally done. The new future home of the International Cryptozoology Museum. All the artwork's done. The whole kit is done. And so I think on Thursday I'll get all the parts, build the prototype. Then if it's approved, then it'll go out for sale to help raise funds for the actual building. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a building. Actually, it looks pretty cool. It turned out good. Yeah, I bet you'll be beautiful once it's done. It is. It's kind of got some Frank Lloyd Wright aspects to it. Yeah. It's a commercial. The vibe. The vibe. It's got, um, yeah, it's got some vibe. Um, but the kit is really cool because, like, there's one feature where there's a big porthole where I'm going to have an animated Nessie swimming away. It'll look like it's underwater, but it'll be viewable to the public outside the building. Right. Is this using their phones to hold up their phones? No, 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 no. You'll walk. No, this portal is like six feet wide and it'll look like an underwater tank. And you'll be in, but it'll have a Nessie swimming in the tank, in the clear water in this tank, like a captured Nessie. That'd be cool. And so that'd be kids, really cool. Yeah, and I've I've named all the sidewalks in front like Nessie Way, and you know, um, it's like it'd be a theme park, is what you're saying. Of, yeah, it kind of is a little. Are you gonna have rides? It's still just a building, but well, I really, well, you have rides just, on site. It's you Disney, need to have rides. It's Disney Disneyland like. But you have to have rides. Oh. Yeah, you have rides now, oh. like. Like the Doug High Check Pukathon roller coaster. This is a budget deal. <laughs> is, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I built, designed the building so it can be built fairly inexpensive, but still have some really cool features that'll actually draw people to the museum. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, so where is this going to be located? This Portland, museum? Maine. Okay, so it's going to stay where it is now because yes. isn't the current one in the same yeah and lauren will location. have location yeah they'll have to find land and you know appropriate land and how many square footage are we talking here um about seven thousand square feet it's but right now it's, yeah it's a fraction of that yeah yeah so that'll be cool and and when do you think they're gonna be breaking ground on this i mean what's kind of like that after the money's you know, when the money's raised and uh, i suppose yeah so you guys gotta do a go fund me yep, and stuff yep, like that yep. and try to get that going yep we're gonna meet, Very cool. meet on it and 
figure out what to do, but I think it'd just be uh it's just been a fun project. But it'll be yeah, so. people can buy the kit. They can buy the kit from um the museum online. Mm-hmm. And they can put together their own international cryptozoology museum and have it on their desktop or their shit. Hey, there you go. Look how cool that'll be. Park Hot Wheels and <clears throat> They could. They could. They could they could they could also have a Godzilla come and step on it. I'm gonna mail you one for free. You should. Good for your birthday. <laughs> for my birthday. For your birthday. That's what you're getting for your birthday. And then I want to see it in your studio, put together at oh, least man. like one week. I'm going to give you one week. <laughs> you're going to give me one week to put it together? Otherwise, it's a $20 fine, too, for that. <laughs> for, for every week, it's not up. <laughs> per, per day, huh? Per day. Jeez. It's tough. Man, you're getting, you're money getting feisty over there. Look at you. You're trying to fund the museum. You figure you could do it on my back. Uh-huh. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send Sturgis over there. This thing I'll be never rich put off, together. I'm going to be rich off the cell phone. 20 bucks a week I'm going to make. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, two. look at that. Hey, that's over a grand a year I'm going to make off you. Yeah, 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 Just you are. cell phone rings. That's it. Yeah, look at that. You're, you know, you know, I'm not a rich man, so you better come up with a better strategy of your wealth than to steal mine because there is none. Oh no. Yeah, that 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 idea just got shot to hell. Well, I take it away twenty bucks at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching the news, and I don't like to gross people out, but I was watching yes, the news, and it's. I think it was one of the saddest things I had ever seen. The Charlie Watts died? Yes. No. Oh. Well, no, okay. we can talk about that in a minute. All right. But around the Kabul air- airport, I don't like to talk, <clears throat> you know, anything. Yeah. yeah. But people are, because there's 25,000 people standing around for days and days in front of the airport, the, they're standing in their own waist two feet deep. Ugh. I want you to picture, you think you're having a bad day. Yeah. Think about standing in front of an airport with your family yeah. desperate to get out of the country, standing yeah. in two feet of human waste. I mean, what we're dealing with, you know, for most of us, is first world problems around these parts. Yeah. These people are dealing with a real humanitarian but crisis. It's so sad, though, that, <clears throat> you know, there's certainly a, a number of people do want to modernize, and, you know, change and. And obviously, there's powers that be that want everything back to the Stone Age. Well, they, they don't call it the Graveyard of Empires for no good reason. Yeah. No, it's... it's. Nobody's ever been able to conquer Afghanistan. No. The Russians couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. Nobody. I don't even believe Genghis Khan did it. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think there's anyone that's ever been able to conquer Afghanistan. 3,000 years of war. Yeah. It's yeah. Insane. It's sad, and my heart goes out to all the people. I do, yeah. All the Afghan people that are, are stuck in the middle of this, that have no choice but to live through it and to deal with it, our hearts go out to you guys and yeah. our prayers, and, and we hope that uh, things work out the way that they need to work out for peace and for prosperity for your country. Yeah. And, you know, Anyhow, I don't, want to, I don't want to get into a downer. I was kind of a, yeah, right, but, right. Yeah, I just, yeah. It was just the saddest thing I'd ever seen. You know, I can't believe they didn't know who Charlie Watts was, though. Who? Me? Are you ready for the show? Yeah, you. You're like, oh, Charlie that? Watts is? Okay, okay. You didn't know until I told you. Let's just I be honest. I don't know who he is. You don't know who Still Charlie don't. Watts? Oh. No idea. Hey, hey I know who ever... Ron Wood is. I know okay. Mick Jagger. Okay. Um, Keith Richards, obviously. Yeah, Keith Richards. But Charlie I didn't know Charlie Watts? I have no idea. He's the drummer. Was the drummer of the Rolling Stones? And how is was he still touring with them? Yes, he died. At, he died at eighty years old. Eighty. He was touring up to eighty. Yeah. No. Look at that. He, you know, compare. You're a kid compared to him. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a kid. You, you know. So there's hope for you too to be touring your 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 thing at eighty years old. Look at you. You're gonna be like the Charlie Watts of the cryptid world. Charlie Watts, may he rest yes. in peace. Yes. Well, anyhow, I was shocked because the Rolling Stones was he, are so Was he old. the first Rolling Stones member to die? Yeah. Yeah. He is the uh, first modern member of the Rolling Stones to die. Okay. 
Well, I hope yeah. they don't all top. I mean, they're all getting so old that they could topple. The whole crew could topple. Well, Where, yeah, they're 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 all pretty. I mean, you'll, I'm looking at his thing right now. His uh, his bio to find out exactly because I do know he was 80, and I did enjoy his. Yeah, dies at 80 years old. He was known as the Rolling Stones' backbone. He kept the band together. The glue that kept the band together dies at 80 years old. Charlie Watts. He was born in, on the 2nd of June, 1941. Hmm. It's crazy. Well, yep. we, had, we had Bob um, on who knew, I'm sure knew Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, Bob knew everybody. Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, just in his line of work. But yeah, he died. Oh, by the way, with Greenwood Fire is getting huge up here. Uh, there's a fire up in Ely, Minnesota. For all of our local listeners, you already know this, but all of our other listeners, um, if, if you have any plans of visiting the North Shore or up to Ely, Minnesota, uh, you might want to hold those plans because currently the the 20,000-acre fire is making its way towards the city of Ely. So we're hoping that it doesn't come that far and Ely is safe and sound and because and, it's a beautiful city, I'd hate to see that, that go up in flames. Do you think that's possible that a fire could get so hot that it would... Wipe the city out, I suppose. I, yeah, I would imagine. You know, you, you get these ultra hot fires. I know the fire is so hot right now. Yeah, they're called the Greenwood Fire, and it took place in Isabella, Minnesota, is where it started. And it Which has never been to Isabella. It's, it's near the North Shore. That's near yeah. the North Shore. Yeah, and what's, what I'm sad about is Isabella is where I like to go and I go grouse hunting every year. Oh, yeah. And it's a beautiful area. Yep. Uh, wood, it's a wooded area. Does, is a that, very dense forest. Does the Echo Trail go through Isabella? The Echo Trail is uh, north and west of that. Okay. Um, the Sioux Line, part of the Sioux Line will go through Isabella. Um, let's see what else goes through there. It's it's really, it's known as one of the premier spots for uh, grouse hunting and fishing areas. Okay, but it's I got to tell Lake you, County. I got to tell you this story, and I'm so... I'm pretty glad he's back, because guess where Blaine went, my son, right? He should know better, but him and his buddy Tim, they went to, they were going to go to the Boundary Waters. To yeah, which is Jack, closed right now. Jack Lake, when they couldn't get in, of course, they didn't check before they went, so they couldn't get in, so now they're thinking, well, what can we do, right? They still want to do an expedition. So they look on a map, they see Lake Agassi, I think it's called Lake Agassi. They look at a man, mm-hmm. and they're figuring they can park on the Echo Trail and punch right through the forest. Oh, this gosh. lake. And, I, and of course, you and I know that's not a smart thing to do. No. Not in Minnesota. Not up there. No. No. So, and so they do, and they so they're bushwhacking their way through the bush. They're now all cut up. You know, yeah. Their faces cut up. Um, yeah, that's rough terrain on top of it. Now dense they, hit forest. A, they hit a huge swamp, one of these long swamps yeah. that's in a crevasse of peat, peat bog. So, of course, they decide to walk through the peat bog. Oh, boy. And they're sinking up to their knees, and you, yeah. you know the deal. It's and like, mosquitoes are ferocious. And, and it was hot. They said it was like oh, yeah. 93 degrees. They're getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, walking through the peat bog, bloodied up, and they're not, they don't even, they're not, probably don't even know where they are. I think they have GPS, yeah. but so they finally make it to the lake. Then they decide to take a swim in this lake. And the lake apparently is so low and nasty from no mm-hmm. wind, no mm-hmm. rain, no fresh water coming in. And they took a swim and they smelled like the swamp monster when they got out. <laughs> they said they we're dirtier when we got out of the lake. Than when they went in. Well, yeah, they got a. It's the dog days of summer, yeah. August. Oh, but you know, but and then no, you this got, this is yeah. dog. This is coyote days, because, <laughs> because there's no there's no fresh water coming in these lakes. No, no, it is there's no so water dry. running out of them. No, you know, there's no flowage. No, no flow. Yeah, this lake yeah. is tiny. It's not big, but but yeah. but they realize they are now trapped, right? And yeah, here comes the smoke. Oh, no. So they tough it out that night, and they decide they're going to pack up early and get the heck out of there. Yeah. And, of course, they realize then there's a trail out. (laughs) 
Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say there. There should. There's trails. There's off trails shooting all over well, the place. There was a trail here. It was pretty rugged, but there was a trail out of there. So they went wow. around a different way. Ended up on the Echo Trail and walked. Got, Our, got to their car, and they were so tired and beat up. Oh, and then Tim got food poisoning. Oh no! From eating one of these uh, mountain, you know, powdered meals or whatever. Yeah. 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 Or, or an allergic reaction, but he was vomiting. Yeah. Oh, God. So he comes back, and I'm, of course, worried about him. And I'm like, dude. Yeah, what are you also, doing? Where are well, you? Well, he told me he was going to go there, but it never dawned on me, the forest fires and the... Yeah. Just And yeah. all of a sudden, it hit me. Oh, my God, my son is in the Boundary Waters. So I tried calling him, and, of course, he did answer. He said, oh, we're back. Yeah. Yeah, this is not the time of year for a lot of reasons to go deep into the woods, and especially if you're not used to being deep in the woods. No. Yeah, it's really not an enjoyable time. But Blaine right likes to go to these places where people have gone missing. And then, <laughs> he lives in Minneapolis. They're all over the place. Pick oh a corner. <laughs> so, anyhow. But they did have a lot of action at Whiskey Jack. I mean, the recordings are... Did yeah, I ever send you know, those to you? They were yeah, you did. Insane. Last summer, they went over to Whiskey Jack. To the point where he's yelling out of the tent for these things to take it easy. Because yeah, they were throwing yeah. so many rocks, big yeah. rocks, near the yeah. tent and throwing stuff. And he literally can hear them on the recordings. Easy, easy. Yeah. Yeah, those boys, pretty bad. I'll tell you, though. It's pretty bad when you have to yell to the Bigfoots to take it easy. Yeah, to chill out. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, isn't that weird? I mean, think about how weird that is. You're in a tent and you're telling Bigfoots to be, not be so, you know, yeah, rebunctious. Yeah, well, it's not like they don't know you're there, the Bigfoot already. So, you know, you're not going to call any more attention to yourself. So, you know, uh, what what else can you do? Hey, be, take it easy. It was probably more for himself than it was the Bigfoots because at that point, I think they were both getting a little rattled. What they're hearing, they're, how could they not? Yeah, his girlfriend ended up coming out of there with PTSD. Really? Yep. Oh, my good Lord. Yep. Man. Yeah. Well, well yeah, cause think about ago. it, though. You're in a tent. You're in the middle of nowhere. You hike in. You can't. There's yeah. no cell service. There yeah. was two people that went missing literally right where they camped, literally right on the spot. Yeah. And no trace yeah. of found. Um Yeah. And he's having all this crazy activity, aggression, and he's thinking, "Huh, I wonder. I think I know why they went missing." Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the thing. I, I do remember that case years ago, or was well, there that were two. Ago, the guy, there were two yeah, there's a couple different people went missing up a whiskey jack, and if you and talk it, the with the guy, they just found his wallet. That's all yeah. they found. It's like what? But, the heck? And if you talk to outfitters up there, there's very few that will take you to whiskey jack. Yeah, I wonder why. It it takes you got to find someone that's either hard up enough for, um, for money, one of the outfitters, to take you up there, or or someone that's never been there because everyone that has experience with this says, "No, nah, I'm good." Not and good, yeah. And it's because it's the it's the feeling you get when you're there and the stuff that happens. They kind of steer away from there. Speaking of Bigfoot, Lon, we have to ask Lon. Don't let me forget about his. Bigfoot experience. It is amazing if you haven't heard it. No, I've never heard Lon's experience. It involves even like military. And really? It's a crazy wow. story. But when you hear it, I mean, you have no choice but to believe him. It's just such an yeah. Ins- yeah. And Lon is so sincere. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever him. meet a more salt of the earth guy that downplays everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lon is a good guy, and he'll be up, of course, bottom of the hour, and we're going to be talking about, well, a lot about Mothman, the wing creatures, too, because I want to, I really need to find out what the hell that's, go, what's going on in Chicago, what that was. You know, they, they do say that these sightings have foretold of some type of tragedy, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you wonder, will there be a plane crash at O'Hare? Well, something bad happened to Chicago. You know what I mean. You just you right, wonder. right. Yeah. Did anything tragic happen? And maybe we should see <clears> before he's on. But did anything tragic happen in your life after you saw your Mothman? Yeah, it did. And that whole area got wiped out by that flood. 
That's right. That is Hold right. Hold on, Eric got wiped out. We were just shocked because we were talking about it. Like, well, this usually foretells of something up and coming, and it wasn't. I don't even think it was two weeks later. They had that yeah. hundred year flood that came through Duluth, Cloquet, yeah. Moose yeah. Lake, and it yeah. wiped literally the area that we saw that thing got all wiped out. It was so big, it rerouted. I think it was the St. Louis River. Yeah, it re- got rerouted. It was yeah. that big. Yeah. It, it was. It was quite the flood. Oh my! It was God, I one. That. There was one story that I never forget reading. Some kid got sucked into the sewer system during that flood, and got stuck in the. You know, or, I, mean, I guess it's the fresh water. What do they call yeah. it? Um, it's not the sewer. It's the. The holding tank, the oh, fresh water. Oh, what well, we have under our streets to drain the water away. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 the rain sewer. Yeah. Well, it's not called a rain. Whatever. Wow, you, you know, know what I'm talking about. So this kid you know gets sucked about. out somewhere miles and miles away into the rain sewer, for lack of a better word, and travels at high speed through this water slide like experience and shoots out. Totally fine, unscathed, miles away from that flood. You know what that kid probably said after he was done? I want to do that again. Yeah. Oh, God. Could you imagine? But I'm sure he was underwater most of the time. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. He's lucky scary. to be still with us. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Scary crazy, crazy stuff. stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Very crazy stuff. So I would. <laughs> another weird thing. <laughs> I always, you know. I'll, I'll work, and then I'll take a break, read the news, catch up a little bit, just kind of rest my eyes. So I'm reading the news. Did you read about this thing um, in England? <laughs> Talk about harmless. Some guy is going around pouring baked beans <laughs> all over people's houses, and they're, he's putting it in mail slots and in mailboxes. And, but, but why baked beans? Why? They have yeah. this, police are searching everywhere for this baked bean. The guy. mad, the the mad beaner of, yeah, the mad beaner big bean Yorkshire. guy of whatever. Yeah, wow. Only in England, man. Only in England. Yeah, it's like uh, it's kind of it sounds kind of fun. <laughs> I think it's like it's caught. But it sounds you know. kind of stupid, but it, it, it does. It's a waste of beans. So no, it's in the town of. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Wanersh in Surrey, England. And, and they're they can't stumped seem to find by this guy. He's a cereal baked bean bandit. He's poor. So he's them. leaving. Is he's leaving baked beans? Is what you're saying? He's so said, he's depositing uh, baked beans yes. wherever they'll fit. He's not stealing them. He's pouring the savory. You know the word for beans. The scientific yeah. name that you don't know. What's the scientific name for beans, Joe? What's the scientific name for beans? Yeah, there's a scientific name for beans. There is? Oh, they're really yeah. good. I know that. Savor, savory? Legumes. Savory. Legumes? Yeah. That's the name for That's bean, the name, legumes. the scientific name for a bean, yeah. Oh, my God. So he's pouring okay. these things on doorsteps, cars, mail slots, mail, you know, he's just everywhere. Just everywhere. Everywhere we can find a place yeah. to put baked beans, he's going to do yeah. it. That, that that's that that is a little strange. So it sounds like this guy is a when bean they catch fetish. Him, they're gonna throw him into the can. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's this a good one. True, no, this is a true story, though. I swear. Yeah, yeah. I swear. It's it's, it's strange. It's not a joke. No, I believe you. There's a lot of weird people out there. And then they, there's, there's a, a bunch strange. of Olympics. Then I read another one. There was a bunch of Olympic um, equestrians, you know, people ride horses and jump. Yep, you know, yep. jump. They had a obstacle there that everybody was complaining about, which was a crouching sumo wrestler, life size, that was ready to attack, and the horses were freaking out. <laughs> so it was just literally they would come up and there'd be this guy's big butt. Right in their face. Right there when the horse is supposed to jump over this sumo wrestler. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's just, you can't make this stuff up, Joel. You can make that stuff up. That That is that is crazy. The things that you find, too, I tell you. 
This Labor Day, put an end to junk sleep. Right now at Mattress Firm, save up to $500 on our top-rated brands when you get a king bed for the price of a queen or a queen for a twin. Plus, get a free adjustable base when you spend $6.99 on Sealy. Or save up to 50% on hot buys from top brands like Sleepies or Serta. With our highly trained sleep experts and our low price guarantee, you can rest assured you'll get the best bed at the best price. Unjunk your sleep only at Mattress Firm. Offer valid with qualifying purchase. Restrictions apply. Valid at participating locations only. For offer details, visit mattressfirm.com slash sale. Have you got it? The Shields Visa card gives you automatic gift card rewards. You can use the Shields Visa anywhere, and the more you use it, the more gift cards come your way to give you what you're passionate about, like a new golf club, shoes, fishing gear, or whatever makes you happy. Stop into your local Shields store or visit us online to get your own Shields Visa card. Shields Visa. Got it. Tap the banner for more. We got to run a break. We come back, though. It just knows the time. We got Lon Strickler with us, everyone. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be talking about winged creatures, strange cryptids, and Doug's own encounter. Don't go anywhere. Hi, Tom Bodette. If you can hear me, then you have an internet connection, which means you can do cool things online, like listen to streaming radio, obviously, or watch a video of a monkey washing a cat. Let your freak flag fly. Or you can book a room at a great price at motel6.com. Isn't the internet wonderful? Everything you want right at your fingertips, and whoa, did not need to see that. I'm Tom Bodette for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I paid more than the minimum each month, and soon enough, it was gone. So you're just giving up? Giving up on what? The life of luxury. Egyptian cotton, caviar Thursdays, designer everything. What are you talking about? Our plan. What happened to winning the lottery and mastering the art of the perfect mimosa? Hosting galas, wearing enough jewelry to require a bodyguard, vacationing in the French Riviera, and then buying it. I just thought maybe it was time to prepare for my future. You know, set some financial goals, make some smart investments, open a 401k. Financial goals? Investments? A 401k? You are horrifying right now. Listen, if winning the lottery were easy, everyone would do it. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Northern Tool and Equipment. So me and the boys head out to tailgate today and find some other fans in our spot. Well, it happens. Uh, cheering for the wrong team. Oh, this is war. Even worse, they've got this couch set up and everything. A couch? Yeah, it's a uh, sectional. All right, first thing, don't ever use the word sectional again. Done. Second, I want you to grab a 4,700-pound tow chain with J-hook and grab hammer. Throw that on the back of your truck. Got it. Now you're going to hail Mary the J-hook over the end of that couch. Time to find a better spot for your new friends. That should do it. There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And 
And welcome back to Untold Radio AM. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me is Mr. Doug Hychek. We have a great guest on tap tonight. As always, Lon Strickler, he is joining us tonight. And Lon, let me pull up your bio, Lon. Shame on me, I didn't even have it loaded, ready to go. So, <laughs> you know, uh, gosh, yeah, let me do that really quickly. Um, get that going, but live radio, here we go. Wow, Lon, 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 let's see. See, Joel? Yeah. Remember the fine for the cell phone? Yeah. So I've just added another one. It's like tw- maybe 25 bucks for not pulling what? up the file. Oh, my gosh. Give me give me a break, Doug. Give me a break. You know, maybe you should start reading the bios. I'm not reading the bios. I think that's a great idea. I, you opened up a can of worms or a can of beans <laughs> from your last story. Anyhow. All right, Lon Strickler is... Let's see. He is one of the foremost researchers and authors and publishers of. Uh, he's a syndicate. He does a syndicated mo- Phantoms and Monsters blog, by the way, that is really popular. And if you've never checked it out, you got to go check out Lon's uh, blog, Phantoms and Monsters. He began that blog, though. Get this in 2005, Lon. It just doesn't seem like it's been that long. I mean, I remember you started, but just has, has it really been that long? Yeah, wow, been. that thing has been around a long time, which has steadily grown, grown, grown in popularity and is read daily by tens of thousands of paranormal enthusiasts and investigators and those seeking the truth. He, re- he His research and reports have been found, featured on hundreds of online media sources, several of these them published reports, and he's even been featured on the History Channel, Agent, History Channel's Ancient Aliens, Sci-Fi, Paranormal Witness, Fact or Faked, all sorts of shows. Lon, man, you have been around. Lon Strickler has been actually an active investigator for, what, more than 30 years now, Lon? 40 so years. Be, all right, without any f- further ado, Lon Strickler, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's been that long. I was trying to re- I was trying to do yeah. some math in my head. It has been like 40 years you've been around. And I can't yeah. believe the blog has been around that long because I remember when you launched that blog. Yeah, it's it was... already uh, been that long. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I, I, I actually had to be talked into doing it, to be quite honest with you. I, got, I had no... I had no inkling to even do something like that. I was not a writer. I, you know, you know, English and writing were my two worst subjects, I believe, in high school. And I just had no real desire yeah. to do that. But it kind of. Uh, well, yeah. How did you become Lon? Never asked you. How did you become the monster guy? I mean, the guy that everyone turned to. Well, how did that become that? Well, you know, I started off really early. Um Back in, oh, God, it was late 60s. I was around nine years old. I was born and raised near Gettysburg. So as a kid, in summertime especially, I'd just hop on my bike and, and ride over to the battlefield. And mm-hmm. um, one day in particular, it was a summer day, I was in the area of the Valley of Death, which is still had a lot of action on the second day of the, uh, the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, it's an area in the valley there between... Um, Little Round Top and Devil's Den, the wheat field. And I was, while I was on my bike, it's like a big TV screen opened up right in front of me. And man, I'm telling you, I heard the cannon, gunfire, screams, yells, smelled gunpowder. The whole nine yards, Jeez. Just, all my senses just opened up. Uh, lasted for about 30 seconds and then it just disappeared. And that was the day it, I was really convinced that i was a bit different and uh, you know i i knew there was something going on but i never really put it together but that day was like the day it really happened and uh you know i i just loved being out there you know there's a mm-hmm. lot of stuff that has happened out there and a lot of residual but there's some there's some real real positive earthbound energy out there as well as a lot of non-positive stuff and, uh, you know, I just kind of just hung around, you know, I used to sneak yeah. on the battlefield at night, used to take a couple of buddies with me and we'd be out there, uh, sitting around and scaring the crap out of all of them with stuff I'm seeing and sensing. And, um, uh, you know, that, I, that's when I really knew I was somewhat intuitive and, uh, I've used that, you know, in high school, in the early seventies, I used to doing paranormal investigations, you know? Mm-hmm. I go to go to houses and I go to businesses or people's 
property and kind of give them an idea of what was going on. You know, back then you told some of your paranormal investigators, it's not like now. You yeah. Know? And yeah. Doug, you know that. I mean, it, it, people think you're damn crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. You're right. You, see it, you said something about that. But, um, yeah, really. And, um, you know, I uh, when I graduated from high school, I went ahead and moved down to Baltimore, Baltimore area. And uh, I, I lived down there for the next 40 years to move back up here back in 20. 20- 16 mm-hmm. and uh you know kind of picked up where i left off but as far as with the cryptids i had a bigfoot encounter in 1981 just east of um sykesville maryland along the south branch of the Patapsco river an area i used to go fly fishing a lot yep and lon you need to tell us this, this story in detail it's okay it's really amazing i um I, I was out there fishing, just like I normally been there several times. Um, had a pair of chest waders that was in the river. The river's not really wide there, but it is deep in some spots. So anyway, mm-hmm. I noticed a uh, a dog across the river on the north side, uh, just kind of walking around through the weeds and stuff. It wouldn't bother me, so I just paid no mind until I heard him yelp. And when I heard him yelp, I kind of looked up and I saw this thing rise up out of the weeds i mean this big hairy whatever i didn't know what it was you know i i I was cognizant of what bigfoot apparently was because uh you know back then the uh people had been watching the uh the boggy creek movie and such so you know we kind of had the idea of what it was but be honest with you, I, I didn't really know what I was looking at. So this did thing, you believe, um, Lon? At that point, did you believe in Bigfoot? I really didn't I mean, have an opinion, to be honest yeah. with you. I, you know, I never had much thought about about monsters and cryptids. You know, the unknown. I mean, I liked I like UFO stuff. I mean, the Benny Barney Hill uh, yeah. incident just really fascinated me. But um, uh, when I saw this thing rise up. It kind of moved to my right, I me mean, to my left, and walked out of the weeds, and just turned and looked at me and stood there, about eight foot height, lots of hair, definitely male. Could see the genitalia in this thing, but I didn't know what I was looking at. And and quite frankly, it looked more Neanderthal, what you want to call Neanderthal, more human than it did anything else. Let's put it this way: if I had a gun, I wouldn't have shot at it. You know. I, yeah. Yeah. But it had a real thick brow ridge and uh, kind of a conical head, but it had a lot of hair on it. And uh, I suppose I was about maybe 40, 50 foot away from it. So we were fairly close. And, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I went into shock or just shocked at what I saw. I guess after I picked my jaw out off the water, I didn't, you know, mm-hmm. I got a better look at it. But we locked eyes. You know, I got, you know, I looked right at it. It was making a clicking sound, which I later found out it may have been gnashing its teeth. I have uh, read other accounts where people state that they hear this clicking sound. Uh, I think it's like a nervous thing. It go- happens to them when they confront things they really don't understand or whatever. It just mm-hmm. seems that to me. I got a bit of a whiff of some type of odor. It kind of reminded me of fox urine. Uh, I used to use fox urine when I used to go deer hunting, and I'd put on my shoes to mask it, but... Um, that's kind of what it smelled like. Didn't smell like what people say a big a garbage smell or something really rotten. I didn't get that at all. But you know, it, it stood there for ten seconds or so, then just suddenly turned and walked swiftly up into the woods. And I had no idea what I was looking at. So um, I went ahead and pulled the rod up, went on land, got up into my car, and I quickly drove back into Sykesville. About a three-minute drive of that, and uh, found the phone at the phone booth at the at a local bar there, and uh, I, I called the the local police and told them, "Hey, I saw something. I don't know if it was a Bigfoot or mm-hmm. what it was, but you know, you know, I'm just reporting it. Well, can you go back there and wait for somebody?" And I'm thinking, "Well, great. I got to go back there now and hope this thing doesn't come back in after me." But I did. I, I you know, I, I started driving back. Figuring I'm going to be waiting around for a police officer to show up. But when I got there, there was a Maryland State Trooper already there. And he had already had one of those wooden, long wooden barriers across the road. So when I pulled up to him, he's there. You got to go. 
you know, you got to leave. Yeah. I said, well, you know, I made a phone call and and told the Sykesville police about, uh, I don't care, you got to leave. Okay. So I backed off and uh, went ahead and went home. I was living in Sykesville. I didn't live far from there. So about an hour later, <clears throat> I uh, I said, well, I'm going back down and see what's going on. And I did. Now, when I got down there, I mean, there were cars everywhere. Uh, I, I literally had to park about a quarter mile away from it and, and walk back up down the In fact, up the road and uh when i got there there was a howard county police officer there at the barrier there are a few other people standing there uh wondering what was going on and uh i asked the the, uh, the county cop i said what's going on oh uh, somebody said they saw a bigfoot he started laughing and i didn't tell him i was the one that made the report yeah. I said, oh okay okay so I, I was standing there just for a bit i didn't stick around long but there were uh there were people with dogs in the woods and, and, you know, along the river, there was a huge white uh, tent they had set up there where I had seen this thing. Uh, I heard helicopters, didn't see any, but there were those black wagoneers that the feds used to drive back then. And there were two of those sitting here. Jeez. So everybody showed up. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering what the hell's going on here. So I went ahead and went home. And I called the local TV shows and TV stations. There were three major stations in Baltimore at the time. And I called all three of them. Oh, yeah, they were all ready for a story. He said, give us a couple of days. Uh, we'll get back. You get back to us and we'll go ahead and go with this. So four or five days later, I call one of them back up and I say, hey, I'm the guy I called and told you about this. Yeah, we're not interested. And he hung oh, up wow. on me. And I'm thinking, I said, okay. Uh, now, I, now I'm getting interested. I'm really wondering what's going on. But what I did find out later, what there was a, a sighting that earlier that morning in Marriottsville, Maryland, which is maybe three miles down the street from where I was, and they already knew they, you know, that something was out. But I tell you, people who do not know the Baltimore, Washington area. This Labor Day, HomeDepot.com is your one-stop shop for all things decor with up to 30% off furniture, mattresses, home decor, and kitchenware. Online, it's a Labor Day savings event. Out there, it's a whole new way to enjoy your space. Whether it's finishing touches or a total transformation, find everything you need to make your home feel more like home at HomeDepot.com slash decor. Free delivery on select items, $45 or more, U.S. only, valid through September 15th, 2021. Have you got it? The Shields Visa card gives you automatic gift card rewards. You can use the Shields Visa anywhere, and the more you use it, the more gift cards come your way to give you what you're passionate about, like a new golf club, shoes, fishing gear, or whatever makes you happy. Stop into your local Shields store or visit us online to get your own Shields Visa card. Shields Visa. Got it. Tap the banner for more. There, there are a lot of facilities all throughout Baltimore County and some of the other counties in that whole mm-hmm. metro area that we just don't know what's there. I have a feeling that something, this thing had escaped from somewhere, got away from somewhere, and they were all out looking for it. Uh, I did get a confirmation from a Sykesville police officer several years later who contacted me and told me that, he was there and he he mm-hmm. remembered what happened uh he said he didn't know what they were looking for because everybody kept quiet about it they didn't tell anybody what they were looking for but you know he was there as security so yeah i'm thinking okay well something's up well i what i didn't know was back in the early 70s mm-hmm. around 73 because 73 was a busy year for ufo activity anyway and there was Bigfoot activity up in Pennsylvania, especially. But there had there was a phenomena that had been going on in Sykesville of this Bigfoot that was actually getting into homes, chicken coops, garages of several of the people who were living along the river. Now, this neighborhood along the Patapsco River was an African-American neighborhood. And I was lucky enough to have been able to I was working with one of the gentlemen whose family members lived down there. So mm-hmm. I got the introduction. 
you know, I was lucky to find out, you know. So I got to speak to some of the original witnesses from the 73 incidents, plus a few other ones that never came forward. You know, when that story broke back in 73, uh, the Baltimore Afro-American newspaper was the one that actually did the initial reporting. And they were getting interviews and such. And, uh, you know, that's where the rest of the media picked up on it. So, you know, the big Sykesville monster thing was going on. I had never heard of it because I was living yeah. up in Pennsylvania at the time. But, you know, that's kind of really what, you know, when everything started with me because I got interested. I, you know, it wasn't just the Bigfoot thing. I was just interested in, in all kinds of stuff that what I was hearing about. So, yeah, yeah that yeah. started everything. Man, so so you see this Bigfoot, you, you go to the bar, you call, even before you have a chance to really get back there, there's already a response from law enforcement. So they had already been tracking whatever this is. They were already looking for it. And you must have been just dumbfounded, you know, when you show up and they're already barricading and they're already basically kicking people out of the area. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. That, I had I'm, no idea what was going on. You know... <laughs> I wasn't familiar with the Bigfoot phenomena, you know, you know, I, I had heard of the, the Patterson Gimlin film. I heard of the Bobby sure. Group thing and, you know, and, you know, it was just, it wasn't even really mainstream back then. And, um, <clears throat> but I knew something was not right. Something was going on. So, uh, that's what I got my taste at. I mean, I really, I really got into the innards of this, this phenomena and its association with others, other officials and such, uh, you know, and over the years, I've talked to a lot of people who, who have worked with the military and worked around this area around Baltimore and some of the facilities. And, uh, yeah, I, I believe, uh, the government does actually do some work with these things, uh, breeds them, possibly use them for experiments and such, but, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I think something got away that day. Jeez. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's your story is so different than others. Um, it's almost like a UFO landed. Mm -hmm. You know, versus a Bigfoot, and the fact they came so quick, they must have been in the area. Oh, they were around there. They had to have been. Yeah, they must have been already looking. I, I would imagine. I would imagine when when Sykesville police put the the call out. These guys were monitoring and got it, and they were there. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it didn't take them long to get there. So, It's my second best Bigfoot story ever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's different. It's, yeah, no, that, that is that is odd. And, and Well, you can just, it. you know, too, it's just the amount of details and the fact you underplay everything so much um, and the fact you were so close to the creature. I mean, you were really. How far were you away, Lon? Oh, I was no more than fifty foot from it. And that's oh, man. pretty close. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was very close. It could have ran up on you so fast. Yeah, I was in the water. I mean, I wasn't going yeah. anywhere. Yeah, you're a sitting duck, so to speak. <laughs> I was. I definitely was. And so you actually heard even the helicopters. You didn't see them, but you uh -huh. heard. Them. You must yeah. have been low. They yeah. must have been awful low. Yeah, I. You know, they they were around there. I mean, you definitely heard them, and. Um, but, you know, when I saw the Wagoneers, because I had been familiar with the the feds, because, you know, you live around that area, you see a lot of federal vehicles for a lot of different stuff. And, you know, I knew yeah. right away that's what they were. Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Have you ever, um, when we shift gears, I want to talk about, um, I don't really want to say Mothman, but winged humanoids. Have you heard of another case where government has plowed into an area after a sighting? Have you ever heard that before? Not like that, but I'll be honest with you. You know, we've been looking into this whole winged humanoid thing in and around Chicago now for, well, it really started back in 2011, but, you know, it really got hot and heavy in 2017. And it's been like pulling teeth with local officials and such as far as getting any type of information from them, uh, even getting video. Because I, I know with all the sightings that we have had in, in the city itself, there has there has to be security video somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, we have filed FOIA requests. I, you know, I've had an encounter, you know, I had two police officers I had an encounter after they got flagged down by um, 
by some family, you know, some people that in the neighborhood. And they, these people in the neighborhood had seen this thing for two days prior to that. And yeah. this thing was standing with his wings out uh, on top of a building. You know, the first thing the cop thinks, somebody's ready to jump. You know, yeah. he didn't really know what the hell he was looking at. And he said it was about, it was a three, just like Chicago has a lot of three-story buildings in, in these neighborhoods, up, uptown neighborhoods. And uh, this thing was up on the top, up on the roof. Just, and he said, when I looked up, I put the flashlight up on it, and I saw those red eyes and those wings spread out. I didn't know what the hell to think, you know. You know, the first thing yeah. I'm thinking is, I'm not reporting this. But he did. He swears he did. Um, and, in fact, he wasn't going to report it to anybody. But his son had seen where there had been the sightings in, in the Chicago area. And he talked him into it, and um, he said, you know, I did make the report. He said, you know, I don't know where it is, but I did make it. And uh, myself and two other people I was working with at the time filed FOIA requests. And <laughs> now you know how it is when you file a FOIA request. It takes you to at least a week or two before you even get a response. Yeah. We all three got our response within a day and a half. So they were flagging it. They were waiting for yeah. it to come in. Yep. Yep, and uh, we all got the standard letter and, uh, you know, no report, no no police report of anything like this anywhere. So, well, What is it reported to look like, the creature? Well, uh, I, let me tell you, I had an encounter back in 1988 here in Pennsylvania. And that encounter looked very much like what people are encountering in Chicago for whatever reason. You know, that was what so many years ago. And but from what I had seen, well, I was with two other people as well. And what we had seen closely matched what people are seeing more recently in Chicago. Overall, mm -hmm. the sighting, the sightings are of a five to six, maybe seven foot uh, emaciated like humanoid figure. Has legs, has arms. Sometimes the arms are attached to the, the wings. Sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the sightings state that the wings are like that of a gargoyle or a bat with the membrane wings. Uh, the head, there's you know, many times there's a, there are red eyes. Not all the time, but many times. The head, for the most part, is like a very thin, like, head with side and, and forward looking eyes, both types. There have been sightings that the eyes were embedded further down into the body, just like that of a mothman, uh, like mm -hmm. was reported at Point Pleasant. Now, some of the earlier sightings that came out of Chicago were of a more insectoid-like being. Uh, the first sighting from 2017 that was reported was in Oz Park. And the woman who's actually an attorney uh, filed this, filed it with uh, MUFON. And uh, we, one of my investigators was lucky to track her down and he got her report. And uh, yeah, the, the, the thing was pretty good size and had the red, red eyes standing in the middle of the park. She was walking her dog. And uh, this thing turned and looked at her with these red eyes. And the wing structure, they were high wings on the back, and they kind of went over top the back. They were that high. But the way she described them was more like that of a insectoid or an insect, okay. maybe Mothman-like or uh, butterfly-like, but it was different. And she said that thing suddenly jettisoned into the air without using the wings, which is what happens with a lot of these sightings. Yeah. And uh, as it gets to the apex before it moves off it's usually screams and these screams have been described by people sounding just like the brakes of a, a train it's that oh, screech, yeah. You know, yeah very you know. metallic sounding yeah metallic sounding okay so uh that's pretty close to what we have had you know now after that oz park sighting we had a couple other three other sightings uh that were originally posted to move on and uh they were calling this thing a lechusa or maybe an owl like being it had the owl wings had the face of an owl but it had the red eyes and um you know this was what people were calling it back then you know owl man you know we, we were trying to figure out what, what really is this thing 
But as time went on, you know, we had a few other owl sightings in other areas. But for the most part, it's been this either this gargoyle or um, bat-like wing. And in fact, we have had a lot of people say, describe it as being very similar to the Jeepers Creepers monster or whatever you want to call that thing from the uh, from the movies. Yeah, I mean, that's what they associated with by, you know, what they saw. And um, so when I wrote the book, I had to I had to write a Jeepers Creepers uh, chapter in there because that sure. we were getting that description so many times. So I, we want to hear some more sightings. But, Lon, do you want to share your sighting from 88? Um, I was living outside of Baltimore and I was I, you know, it was a Saturday or a Sunday. A Sunday, and um, I had been in Boy Scouts when I was younger, when I was living up in Hanover, Pennsylvania. So it was a jamboree or something going on at the, the Timonium Fairgrounds, is what, where they have the state fair every year in, in Maryland. And I was in the pavilion, I was just nosing around, I didn't have anything to do. And I ran across a friend of mine, a guy I went in Boy Scouts with, a guy I went to school with, knew him real well. He knew me. He used to sneak on the battlefield with me when we were kids. So he knew what I was into. Yeah. So uh, he never knew anything about the Bigfoot encounter. So, you know, I told him about that. And he said, you know, next week, a friend of mine and I, another scoutmaster, because he was a scoutmaster at this time, he said, we're going up to the old Camp Conewago, and we're going to be checking out some reports of something screaming in the woods, scaring the, the scouts, and they're packing things up and heading out. Uh, so he said, would you like to come up? I said, yeah, you know, I can, you know, I'll go for that. But uh, not knowing what to expect. Um, I got up there. It was a Saturday. Oh, it was actually, it was a Friday night. And, uh, by the time I got there and we hiked into the woods and got up a, a, against the, uh, we were right beside the little Conewago Creek area, uh, made camp three tents set up all ready to go. Got the fire going first night nothing it was dead you know we didn't hear anything we didn't see anything uh but that night while we were sleeping each one of us were in separate tents so we did all three of us heard something moving around throughout the camp i just figured one of those guys got up and going into the woods relieve themselves or something you know, i didn't really think much about it but when we woke up the next morning we all talked about it because each of us heard it so so then, we're, well, it could have been a deer, could have been something, you know, who knows. So we decided, well, we're going to be going into the woods that day and just nose around, see if we can find something with any evidence of why people are hearing screams and, you know. So we did. I mean, we, we were out there. We were out there all day long. And, uh, you know, this was in the fall, so it was really nice. Um, we got back to camp, I guess, about six or so sat down, cooked, ate something, sitting around the campfire, talking football. You know, that's what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Nothing going on. So about 11 o'clock, I figured about 11, we heard this scream. And it really didn't seem like much to me. It, it could have been an animal of some type. You know, first thing I thought was probably a screech owl or, you know, yeah. barn owl or something screaming in the woods. You know, so, you know, if you ever heard a rabbit scream, they make the most horrific screaming sound sometimes. Yeah. And um, maybe a bobcat. Well, okay. Well, we don't know what that was, but, you know, we're going to keep sitting here talking. So that's what we did. Then again, we heard it again about an half an hour later. Now, this time it sounded like a human, a woman, a kid screaming. And mm -hmm. it was kind of moving in and out like this thing was either flying or just moving about real quick. And uh, so now we're wary something's out there. We don't have any idea what it is. I didn't have, you know, me being an intuitive, I had real no, sen no sense of what was going on. I didn't really sense anything, but, you know, so we're going to stay up the rest of the night. Okay. So we're still sitting around there listening and talking a bit. For smarter money decisions, Lending Tree can help. With the Lending Tree app, you can track your finances, compare loan rates, and find ways to cut monthly bills. Download the free Lending Tree app and start keeping more of your money. Terms and conditions may apply. NMLS number 1136. This Labor Day, HomeDepot.com is your one-stop shop for all things decor, 
with up to 30% off furniture, mattresses, home decor, and kitchenware. Online, it's a Labor Day savings event. Out there, it's a whole new way to enjoy your space. Whether it's finishing touches or a total transformation, find everything you need to make your home feel more like home at homedepot.com slash decor. Free delivery on select items, $45 or more, U.S. only, valid through September 15th, 2021. My legs got tired, so I went ahead and, and stood up, stressed a bit, and started walking out towards the, the the creek. And I just had this feeling something was around us. I, I, I really started getting that feeling, you know. So I went back and told those guys, look, let's just go out and get our flashlights, walk out on the trail, and um, see what we can see, see if there's yeah. anything out so we got up and grudgingly walked on the trail, but we didn't get far. We got about 50 foot, maybe a little longer up the trail. And we all three saw this thing standing in the creek. And now at this time of year, the creek is really low. It's fall. You know, we had a lot of moonlight that night so we could see whatever it was, you know, the actual uh, form of this thing. And it was standing in the middle of the creek and it had these bright red eyes. And by the time we got the flashlights on this thing, it suddenly jettisoned in the air. And I guess when it got to a certain height, it started screaming and kept screaming and started flying away. You know, so these guys, I mean, my buddy, he was scared to death. He wasn't I was going to say, were you guys running the other way at this yeah, point? Yeah, we were running. I didn't <laughs> realize we were running, but we were, you know, we got back there. We sat down looking around, hoping this thing isn't coming back. And uh, my buddy isn't talking. I'm looking at him. And the other guy we were with said, hey, did you see the, um, did you see that stuff on his back? And I did. I had seen some type of structure or something on his back. So I just assumed it was wings. Mm -hmm. uh, but this thing never unfurled its wings. It just took off without doing it. So, uh, you know, after several minutes and my buddy not talking, he, he, he just suddenly said, I'm going up the administration building and sleeping tonight. I'm not going to be out here. Okay. So him and his friend. They went up there, and that's where they spent the night. I was out there. I was waiting. I wanted to see what the hell this thing was. And, uh, you know, if I'm coming up there to find out what it was, I wanted to see something. So, uh, but the rest of the night was dead. Nothing happened. And uh, so, you know, this story, I kind of stuck on this story for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I didn't say a whole lot to too many people. Uh, my wife knew about it. But, you know. So when I started working on the blog, uh, about 2008, that's when I put mm -hmm. it up on the blog for the first time. So this is like 20 years later. And um, I put it up there, then I started getting responses. And the first response I got was from a gentleman who lived at Dick's Dam, which is just upstream from where we were. And he first thing he said was, you know, I've been hearing this screaming for 20 years now. I had no idea what it was. It's the first time I ever heard anybody talk about it. Um. Uh, I guess it was referred to him. I don't think he got a rail off my blog. Well, a couple of days later, I got another email. And this is from a scout scout leader that had been up at Camp Conewago maybe a month before that. And uh, his, you know, he was out there with his scout troop. He said one one afternoon, his ki the kids had been out just roaming around. And they came all came screaming and running back to the campsite and told him that they saw a dragon. That's what they called it, a dragon. And of course, he thinks they're playing games with him. He's, you know. Yeah. So he said, you know, I didn't take them serious. He said they acted serious, like they really saw something. They were kind of skittish the rest of the weekend. Mm -hmm. But when I saw your, your story, your account, he said, now I know they were telling me the truth. Well, this um, this phenomena has been continuing for those years. I, I've had five other sighting reports along Conewago Creek. Now, Conewago Creek actually goes a little west from there, then actually turns and goes towards the Susquehanna River, and that's what it enters into. And I've had people see this thing along the Conewago Creek at different points. Uh, I think the last sighting I had was maybe four years ago, maybe a little longer. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but, yeah, so the people, the people up in that area call it old red eyes now, so I don't know. I I, I don't really want to be part of the lore, but, you know, I, I don't know what people are seeing. So there you go. So that was my wow. encounter. But it was interesting 
from what we could, what I saw, or the three of us saw, was very similar to what we saw and they're seeing in Chicago now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man. So you're look. I mean, it looked at you guys. I mean, it knew you guys were there, obviously, because it took off the way it did. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there any thing you remember, like s- smell or anything odd? I mean, there, were, there it was. And what was your first thought when you saw this thing? Well, I I, I thought we were all three of us were crazy. You know, yeah, something with yeah. red eyes. You know, I had known about the Mothman. You know, yeah. I knew about the Mothman story. A lot of people did. It wasn't really even mainstream back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you you know, even back then, you in the paranormal circles, you just didn't hear a whole lot of things about that. But I knew about it. I had been to Point Pleasant, mm-hmm. but this wasn't like something we like a thought form or anything we conjured up. I mean, this thing was there. And how, many, how many witnesses, Lon? It was so, three of us. Three. And, and was, actually, the, the the guy who was with my friend, he died two years later. Uh, so, do you uh, think there's a mm. do you think there's a possible water um, de- common denominator with these? Yeah, we have thought about that. That's that's something we have thought about. I mean, you know, of course, Chicago in particular has a lot of water, a lot of oh, waterways goodness. in the lake. Mm-hmm. We've had a lot of sightings along the lake. Uh, we've had some sightings along some of the waterways in the city, but you know, we're getting sightings. As far north as uh, Milwaukee, further west out into Madison, and down into uh, you know 100, 200 miles south of of Chicago into Illinois into Indiana. So it's I you know it, it may be a factor in some sightings, but um, yeah, there have been there have been several where it's uh, it's near water. That's true. Have you mm-hmm. have you had any um, sighting reports from Colorado? Because I, I took one from Colorado. Yeah, I, I probably do. You know, I've had so many reports. If I if I went and looked and, and searched the blog, I'm quite sure I have. In fact, I know I do have at least I, one. So you, yeah. you're going to have to probably do a pin map at some point. It'd be very interesting. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, right. got, I've got the map. Of course, I've got the map for the Chicago sightings and the areas around there. Right. Uh, we're up to 129 sightings now that we believe are valid sightings. Wow. Well, uh, of course, since... October 9th of 2009, uh, October 2009, most of the sightings have been in and around uh, the O'Hara area and uh, in Rosemont, the suburb yeah. there. So, um, but, Lon, you've got to realize, I'll bet you it's way less than 1% of people that are reporting. Oh, I know that. It's oh, got to yeah. be, what, yeah. point zero zero right. one, Because it's so outlandish. You know, it's oh, just so many. It's worse yeah. than Bigfoot by far. Right. Well, I, I do have a I do have a confidential source at the airport who's actually a supervisor of one of the, the carriers. And they um, they do uh, their their sub his their subordinates are ground crew. Mm-hmm. And they have heard a lot of sighting reports. I mean, they come right directly to them and they have, you know, they have verified some of the sightings uh so you know there are sightings i mean and but you know the airport itself the um the carrier supervisors the cargo supervisors the um uh the powers that be at o'hara uh they have steadily told employees not to report these sightings at the risk of yeah. losing their job. They have been threatened, basically. Jeez. And Jeez. my name has come up in light of a lot of that as well. Uh, you know, don't call this guy. Don't call this team, this 14 research team. Don't call them at all. You know, but people yeah. people are still calling us and still contacting us. And um, we've had sightings about by TSA agents, I mean, TSA security people, um, pilots. We had two pilots that saw this thing literally fry in front of their cockpit as they were taxing into Jeez. the terminal. Uh, so, so it actually kind of buzzed them. Yeah. I mean, it played chicken with them. Yeah. Uh, air seems... traffic controller had seen had seen this thing, and when he went out for a smoke break, it was out in the parking lot. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, and this last sighting we've had on July 22nd, and I believe this is probably the most profound sighting we've had over there. We've had mm-hmm. at least eight witnesses now to that one sighting because the, the biggest thing about this sighting is it was in the right in the middle of the western cargo area of the airport, and it was right along a fence that goes over to the tarmac. And when they saw this thing, uh, some of the United and FedEx people who saw this thing, they immediately called their supervisors. So when the supervisors got word, they called TSA. And there were many witnesses who saw at least eight TSA vehicles approach this thing. And when they approached it, this thing just took off. Yeah. Yeah. TSA carries no weapons. They don't, you know, they carry flashlights. That's all they carry. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, so these witnesses have come forth and uh, but they were all told to not say a word. Don't say anything. And uh, but they're defying their own employers. Uh, we keep everything absolutely confidential. And, you know, we if we didn't do that, we wouldn't get half of what we're getting. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the word would definitely get out there that we're, we're not, you know, competent and, and, and wouldn't keep their identities uh, private. Wow. But this whole phenomena is has gotten weirder and weirder because we've had a UFO sighting that may be associated with it. We've had other humanoids and possibly extraterrestrial activity associated with it. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of weird stuff. And um, quite frankly, I'm in the process now working with some new people on the team where we're we're actually getting into the metaphysical uh, uh evidence gathering yeah. so uh there's i tell you the the airport itself is odd i mean you know o'hara has always been an odd place yeah but uh there is a cemetery at o'hara and a lot of people don't know that uh when they built this thing they ended up having to keep a cemetery there and they, they actually dug one up and moved it but there's the rest haven cemetery is still there yeah. and I'd say within a hundred yards of this cemetery, there have been at least six sightings of this thing. Jeez. Now, is this cemetery so has some connection? I believe so. This, the UFO sighting uh, of this craft, this oval craft, where this humanoid type being was ascended up into it, was right over top this cemetery. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the truck drivers and cargo people, dock people, have seen small humanoids walking about uh so you know you know we got to take that into consideration you know i'm not you know i don't discount anything out of hand now you know it, we just pow it up and see what shakes loose and hopefully we're going to catch a break at some point is there more than one of these I things so. do you think yeah i believe so i i think when this started back in 2017 we were dealing with at least three different beings Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is because of the different parts people are seeing this at, at really close times, same times. There mm-hmm. were some uh, there were some variations. Some didn't have the red eyes. Some acted a little more skittish than others. But for the most part, these these sightings have been very fleeting, very fast. By the time people get over the shock of seeing something, they have no yeah. idea what it is. It's done. That's, you know, until yeah. you can't fumble in your pocket and pull up the camera, and, and you know, it's gone. And uh, we have had people who have witnesses who have seen these things flying very close to them and just suddenly disappear like it went through a an invisible doorway. We've had people tell mm-hmm. us that they, this thing would just manifest in front of them. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of supernatural aspects to these beings. And, um, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, it just comes down to where we can take the common denominators and put them together and maybe figure out what this is. Do you personally believe it to be extraterrestrial? extraterrestrial? I believe. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. I believe it's, it, it may be an extraterrestrial aspect to it. I do believe it may be ultra terrestrial in nature. Uh, I, you know, that, that, um, that cemetery had, you know, we have done some remote viewing work and some other Mm -hmm. energy work around there. And, um, 
we had detected three ley lines that did dissect at that at that cemetery. So if yeah. that's the case, you know, you, when you're talking ley lines, just because it's covered with a tarmac, I mean, these ley, these ley lines go past the city and out. You know, they're long. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But the fact that we're, we're sensing that maybe some type of uh, ley line activity uh, bisecting at an area, well, you're talking about possible vortex or something opening up. So, you know, it's, it's all speculative <laughs> at this point. But, man, I'm telling you, you know, it's... I can't. I can't say it has been frustrating. You know, I would love to get a, a very nice picture of it. You know, actually, we had. I think the best opportunity to get a picture just a couple of weeks ago, uh, because one of these people who actually saw this happening on the twenty second was leaving mm-hmm. work. It was in their car, and they saw it. They saw the TSA people all around it. He jumped out of his car, pulled up his his camera, and he was approached by a tsa person they told him absolutely do not don't even think about it get back in the car and get out of here yeah yeah so you know they're keeping a hush yeah so they know about it i mean there's something to it and and they're not talking but yet they sure reacting when there's something to be seen so what the question remains what do you think these creatures are getting out of being here are they eating are they feeding are they scaring people are they well they're scaring people what's the Uh, purpose what's been you know i had we have checked for lost pets animal remains and stuff like that nothing we're not getting any of that you know you know so they're not attacking anybody no and you know they're they're, not they're not really aggressive but they are they are swooping at people joel you know, you know, yeah. when they scare people, I think some people believe they are being aggressive. But overall, I, I, don't, I don't think they are aggressive, I, especially this bunch that we've been seeing since 2017. Um, they want to be seen because they're right in your face. You know, we've had people literally approach these things within five foot. Uh, and uh, they're not shy. So, oh, OK, geez. back back up long. Okay. So. When you say they want to be seen, mm-hmm. what would it get out of that? Is it, you know, I, I think about um, quantum physics, you know, by powers of observation, you make something more real. Mm-hmm. You get it locked in, I guess. You know, so if you observe something, you can lock it in. Do you think that's what they're trying to do? They're trying to create their own existence by being seen? Possibly. Okay. Yeah. That sounds I, crazy. I, I, I will tell you, I tell you two instances where the person was up and personal with this thing. The first one was a lady out in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Uh, she had a routine of going around the neighborhood, walking around the neighborhood late at night just to walk, you know. And she was, uh, there's a playground near her home, so she would cut through the playground and then walk through the playground and go around the back to her home. So one one of the evenings she was out there, it was about 10 o'clock, and she saw this big tall thing standing on the sidewalk in the playground. At first she thought it was two people embracing. That's the first thing she thought. She told me, she said, I thought it was two people hugging each other and kissing each other. But I couldn't understand what this thing in the middle was because it was tall, you know, so maybe they had an umbrella or something. I don't know. He should said, but when I stopped, this thing turned, and then I saw how wide this thing was, and it wasn't two people. And literally, she heard this thing gurgling. It, it you know, it, it had the wings wrapped around the body. It was black in color. She didn't see any eyes, but it was very still. And was making a gurgling sound. I believe the thing was sleeping standing, to be quite honest with you. But she said when she saw it, she suddenly lost control of her legs and became very weak. Mm-hmm. And uh, this isn't unusual with cryptids, and let alone this, this, uh, these cryptids, because, you know, a lot of times you hear about uh, infrasound and possible uh espn not espn esp and um mm-hmm. and some type of psychic connection between these beings you know you even hear a bit about bigfoot and such but um she's got very weak she said she picked herself up 
went around this thing and walked further up to a bench and sat down to try to gather herself. She kept her eye on it. It did move, didn't move towards her. When she got herself straightened, she immediately made herself home, way home. And when she got home, told, she told her son. And when she told her son, he wanted to see it. So they got in the car and drove over towards the, the playground. And as they were approaching the play, playground, there were these bushes that kind of circled the front of it. And because he, <laughs> he was driving. And yeah. she said, this thing lunged out from the bushes, scared the hell out of them. Jeez. So they both saw it. So, so it purposely tried to scare them, kind of yeah. peekaboo, peekaboo style. So, you know, that's when they got home and they started searching. They knew nothing about the sightings. And this was probably a year and a half into the sightings in Chicago. So uh, she uh, she called me and she was on the phone with me less than a half hour. She, you know, because I was pretty well putting it out there that I mm-hmm. was taking reports. So I had, you know, I had been running ads and goo and such. Uh, so she called me and she told me her story. And, you know, I told her, well, you know, you're not the only one. This thing is being seen all over, you know, the metro area. And yeah. Beyond. And um uh, so that freaked her out, and uh, but I, not much I could tell her, you know. So I kept everything confidential. But it was it was really the first real close encounter we had. Did did and, she give you a better description? Not other than what she told me, just big black, and that the wings were wrapped around it, and it made this gurgling sound. So mm-hmm. and of course, then they later saw this thing lunge out of the bushes toward the car. Uh, she said it didn't hit the car. She said he, she didn't even know it flew. It may have flew over the car, but she saw a jump or lunge out from the bushes. So, uh, yeah, then they found me and called me. Now, I had another encounter, <clears throat> close encounter, uh, maybe a half a year later. And this was a couple who were in Chicago uh, around Lakeshore Drive. And uh, her, the woman's mother lived in a condo there. And they were actually, it was about nine in the evening, such it was dark, and they were out walking along Lakeshore Drive, and as her and her husband. And as they were walking, heading back toward the, uh, the condo, this big, dark thing flew in front of them from the lake, the direction of the lake, towards the condo, which is to their right. And as it was flying, it just literally swooped up the side of the condo and as it got to the top and they were watching it, it just hung in midair like it was looking through a window. And, and they watched it for a couple seconds and she said this thing bent backwards and just dove back towards the trees. They were running then. I mean, they were running because they had to go to it was Shiller Avenue. They had to take a right on Shiller Avenue and yeah. head back to the entrance of the, um, the condo. Well, they didn't get far because this thing literally ascended down in front of them. And she said it had its wings spread out. It had the bat-like wings spread out. It was vibrating. They said the legs were literally vibrating, and they could feel the vibration. And it just came down slowly in front of them and hung, like, a couple feet above the ground, above the pavement, and just uh, was watching with these big red eyes, and it was vibrating. And she said... (laughs) <laughs> and she gave the same description to most people. It was very emaciated looking, dark in color. But the one thing she did notice was it had that wet look. You know, it was shiny, but it had like it was a wet look to it. Yeah. So she said she lost it. I don't know if she passed out. She fell to the ground because uh, now her husband was there with her. And, you know, he eventually picked her up and took her into the into the condo. It, it was hovering there for I don't know how many seconds. He really didn't know because he told me he didn't know how long it was there. But it just, then it just slowly started ascending up with the wings spread out and just ascended up into the air and then took off. Now, other people had seen it because they did see a flash from like a phone go off across the street. And there was a guy in a van, I, you know, 9 o'clock at night. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he was delivering something or a maintenance man or something. Yeah, she heard, they they said they heard him say, "Oh shit!" and got in the tr- truck and headed out of there. 
Uh, but he picked her up and took her into the condo. And uh, they were supposed to leave out of Chicago the next day. Well, they called me. She was afraid to fly. So they were stuck there for three days until she got the nerve to get on a plane. But uh, and the interesting aspect about this was that the husband was a professional athlete in Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, he didn't want to getting out that he, he and his wife saw this thing. Uh, this is also another interesting thing. Uh, several of these sightings have been made by celebrities or people that people know. Uh, yeah. new, news people, um, people who work in the mayor's office, uh, let alone the police officers and others. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's been a wide variety of witnesses. Uh, it's been around a long time. Yeah. And, yeah. And there's and been, a, so, been a lot of witnesses. And, and, but uh, the O'Hare Airport, does that seem to be like the number one hotbed of sightings, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, I don't think we had a real a real good sighting at O'Hare before October 2019. But that first sighting was actually by an Uber driver who was parked outside of the airport property. Mm -hmm. You know, because they sit, they would sit out there waiting for, you know, they, you know, they go to the terminal and pick people up or get a call. You know, people get a call for Uber and they're, they're right there. So it doesn't take them long to get there. Yeah. And he saw this, he said others, other Uber drivers saw, well, uh, this, um, this dark winged being with red eyes was, you know, he was parked on the side, on the left side. Mm -hmm. And this thing was out in the green area beside him. And the one thing he did say, which is, we've never had another description like this, is he, when he got out after this thing left, it was a very strong ammonia smell. Now oh, I, we haven't been able to figure out what that is, but uh, yeah. we've had we've we've had people go out there. Uh, some of the investigators who are local have been out there and, and documented everything. So, uh, so what kind of propulsion? Obviously, their wings are for show. They do use the wings on occasion. Now I'm not saying they totally don't use the wings. I mean they date. Some people have seen them flap these things. Some people have seen them slightly move when they're flying, and others have seen them flap as well in the air. They, they're they very maneuverable. You know, it's not like we've got somebody in a drone using a big drone or somebody in a squirrel suit jumping off a building downtown. I mean, they don't call it the Windy City for nothing. So, you know, if you're jumping off a building in, in, in Chicago, your chance of being alive isn't going to be too damn good. You're yeah. either going to hit the river, going to hit the sidewalk, or hit the side of a building. So, right. yeah, that's not going to happen. And, and oh, I've actually, we've actually talked to actual professionals who do this, um, and they said, "Well, that's just suicide. You'd never do that." Yeah. Well, they defy they defy physics. Um, I, yeah. You were the you were the first person I told my sighting to. You remember that, Lon? Oh my God. I don't know. <laughs> and, yeah, I told you my sighting, and you published it in your yeah. Phantoms and Monsters, but I didn't didn't want my name to be used. Oh, okay. Well, that yeah, you you know. Anyhow, so we were just we were driving, beautiful night, you know, clear sky. I don't know if there's been a weather uh, common denominator, but this was a beautiful evening. Driving south on 35W, not too far from Joel, actually. Mm-hmm. And this thing just dropped out of the sky. I mean, it had its wings open, mm -hmm. but it dropped straight down. So it defied, you know, wind resistance. Mm -hmm. And it dropped down like a spider and then hit it right for our windshield. Oh, that happens a lot. I mean, right for the, I mean, Jeez. I got to look in the eyes of this thing, Lon, from yeah. three, four, five feet away before I finally ducked because I thought it was coming through the windshield. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they like they seem to like to play chicken, uh, you know, on the highway. I've <laughs> had several of those sightings where, you know, they they people are in their car and they see this thing coming towards them, and it's mostly at night, but they get a they get a sense this thing is coming towards them, and it gets closer and closer, and just before it hits the windshield, it just like moves up and it's gone. Well, we don't even yeah, I ducked. Yeah, um, Yvette ducked, and. Um, the weird thing is, is my legs, 
I thought, so I first experienced like goosebumps in my lower half of my body, which I've never experienced. <laughs> and then my legs were numb, which was really weird to have my legs numb. Mm-hmm. Um, and literally, Yvette made us pull over to, because she thought, well, what if it's clinging onto the roof? <laughs> yeah. It's not on the roof of the car. Yeah. But, you know, it's just such, it catches you off guard. And I didn't tell anybody because I'm the Monster Quest guy. You know, sure. who am I going to tell Juan? So what did it look like? It looked at brown, shiny skin. And it definitely what the, the space. What did space look like? Like a gargoyle. Oh. Just like a gargoyle. Pointed just, ears. Just, yep. The like whole, a bat almost. Like a bat. Like a, well, like, yeah. I mean,. Is my memory correct? I have no idea, but I know it happened. Yeah. Because I've been reminded about it, you know, tons of times. <laughs> because when you have a witness with you, and you both see the same thing, and we have discussed it, and we were, you know, we were just driving, just trying to get home. Switching to Geico is a good idea, especially when you consider everything. First off, Geico makes it easy to switch. They have licensed agents available 24-7 online or over the phone. But if it's so easy, you might start thinking everything is easy, even big wave surfing. And it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Well, if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds on car insurance. And you could keep saving by bundling your motorcycle, boat, and RV, plus your home or renter's insurance. But saving money might lead you to make some questionable purchases, like a 20-foot feather boa. And do you know how hard it is to clean a 20-foot feather boa? Well, they do have an industry-leading mobile app you can use to pay your bill, file and manage a claim, or add a new driver. But when life gets a little easier, it makes you too confident. And you start calling everyone ace. And you're better than that. Well, GEICO has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and has been saving people money for 85 years. It's hard to beat that. But you're right. Switch to GEICO. It's obviously a good idea. This Labor Day, HomeDepot.com is your one-stop shop for all things decor with up to 30% off furniture, mattresses, home decor, and kitchenware. Online, it's a Labor Day savings event. Out there, it's a whole new way to enjoy your space. Whether it's finishing touches or a total transformation, find everything you need to make your home feel more like home at HomeDepot.com slash decor. Free delivery on select items $45 or more, U.S. only, valid through September 15th, 2021. I mean, there wasn't, we weren't thinking about monsters. Let's put it that Do way. you think there's a reason why you encountered it? Well, I ended up doing a show. I did a, I did a one-hour monster quest that yeah. I had refused to do before because I said there's no physical evidence. But then yeah. when it happened to me, I, I, I kind of re, I started to rethink my position. Yeah, I bet really quick. But yeah, to the well, following yeah. day, you were And I felt bad for the all next, the people yeah. that I had kind of thought, ah. It must be a mistake. Yeah. yeah. So there you go, Lon. I mean, we're here. Here we are. I'm certainly, I guarantee, the first guy to interview you that saw one of these things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's you know when all this started, you know, the first sightings that that really happened in Chicago that people knew about were the um, the three sightings in in 2011. Uh, these were all in South south chicago and uh they weren't that far from each other right but uh you know there was an innocuous photograph of something i believe it was a butterfly let alone i you know i don't know what it was but uh, but the witnesses you know all these reports came into mufon we were able to talk to one of them and uh you know they they, they were very forthright and this is another thing about this whole phenomena that just is something that's been sticking with us from the very beginning. You know, now, when we first started doing the sightings in Chicago, uh, Mar- uh, Rosemary Ellen Golly was with my team. You know, we were, I was getting the sightings and I had Rosemary actually calling these witnesses back to talk to them. So, cause I wanted verification, you know, I've got other people doing that now since she passed, but it was interesting the, the way they were sticking to the story. And we tried, we tried very hard to see if we could get them to change it just to see what they would do. It was almost like they were imprinted with this thing and they didn't deviate at all from what they originally told us. So 
And look, in the cryptid world, that's very unusual because people have a tendency to embellish on a story after a while. But I have gone back and talked to several of these people over the years, and they still do not change. They will call me, well, have you heard anything else about my sighting or in that neighborhood or that area? Yeah. Do you have any explanations? But don't don't you feel that because you saw one of these things? Mm-hmm. I literally, and I, I'm not... I'm not trying to be silly here. I'm mm-hmm. being truthful. If I got to go run the garbage cans out in the middle of the night, two in the morning, <laughs> it happens. Not tonight. Yeah. I took them out early. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you, Lon, my head's on a swivel. Oh, yeah. Because once you see one of these things come at you. Yeah. And with such speed and 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 menacing looks, and you're thinking... Uh, could this account for all the missing people? Could these, you know, because we don't know anything. But I'm going to tell you, on my grave, they are real. Mm. Oh, yeah, they're real. No doubt in my mind, they're real. Uh, I've seen something, and, you know, the people that we talked to had definitely seen something. They believe they've seen something. Let's put it that way. But their stories are so compelling. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit scary because a lot of these people have really changed. Um, you know, I talk to people all the time that have experiences, but mostly with these experiences with these winged humanoids, uh, they, you know, if they were a skeptic, boy, they are no longer a skeptic because it, they saw something and they're never going to forget it. But it doesn't sound like anyone's been hurt. No. It doesn't sound like it has any intent to hurt anybody. And so what's the point? The car. Yeah, yeah, unless well, you crash yeah. the car. Yeah, the Corvette. Absolutely. You ever tried to yeah. cut the Corvette, Joel? It's not easy. No, I understand what you're saying, Doug. Oh, but that's, I, that I was remember more your report of a... Now. When you said Corvette, I remember the report now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine yeah. if you're driving a Corvette and... You were going at a clip. I mean, it would be kind yeah. of hard to back off that. It's thing. a low. I mean, there's not much room in there. Yeah. Uh-oh. But no, because no, I, I thought I it. it's coming right through the windshield. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got no. That. I, I get what you're saying. I mean, you know, yeah, you almost crashed your car, or people would have crashed the car. But I mean, that's that's yes, that would be considered a direct result of the encounter, you know, but whatever. not. It would just be, oh, some idiot rolled his Corvette on the freeway. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is there is no direct attacks like that I'm aware of. You well, know, we don't. Anyone's the thing is, Joe, it, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. we just got done talking about a guy at Whiskey Jack. They just found his wallet. Th- this is true. This is true. But I'm talking about in Chicago with these sightings, it doesn't seem to be, to my knowledge, any direct Joe, attacks. Do you know how many people go missing in Chicago? <laughs> I understand that. Just as many people go missing in Minneapolis. Yeah. It's just, yes. It's, it's actually, the numbers are insane. Yeah, they are insane. Oh, I believe they're it. Just, I believe it. You can't even believe the missing people numbers. And yeah, a lot of people are runaways. and But I'm talking about people that never come back. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree with you. I'm not saying there was none, I think but there's about no that. reports. When I go take the garbage out at night, Lon, I think yeah. you. I've been involved think... with cases where uh, I had a I had a, an abduction case. Uh, and it was in my my uh, alien disclosure book uh, where the woman, uh, you know, the night bef- you know, the night she re- re- uh, reported it to me. I was on the phone with her and her mother for like three hours and they were scared. They weren't leaving the house because this has been going on for like two mu- two weeks. They'd be seeing these red and white orbs out in the yard and they'd be hearing popping sound from these orbs hitting each other. Then they heard, uh, then they heard something scampering about on the roof, up in the attic, you know, and they were scared. They were scared to leave. Well, I was supposed to talk to them the next day. Never got a phone call. The girls, the woman's name was Mandy. She was a school teacher. Uh, about three or four days later on a Sunday, I got a call from her mother and she told me, she said, I- I'm so sorry. We never got back in touch with you, but Mandy's gone. And then I'm there. Well, what do you mean? Mandy's gone. She said, I went to, um, I went upstairs to go to sleep and Mandy's light. I could tell underneath the door, she had light on the bath in her bedroom. And she was gone. She was nowhere to be found. 
she's running through the house looking for her, looking everywhere. Uh, yeah. Of course, the cops come there and they say, well, she took off with somebody. Well, her car was still there. All, all her belongings were still there. Mm-hmm. That was almost 10 years ago. I have kept up with this case and nobody has ever seen her. So I, I believe that's probably one of the only abduction cases that I know of but I, that I actually documented where the uh, where the person just never came back. Yeah, we're just vanished. Well, yeah. it's always it's always the fact we'll never know because we don't. Absolutely, we don't know. We can't talk yeah. to them. They're gone, Joel. No, no, but my my I guess my point was was as scary as these encounters are in Chicago that these people are reporting. Right. I haven't heard any reports of anyone being physically no physical altercations oh, like directly. Yeah, is what I was trying to. to yeah, was like attacked and beat up, and then like attacked yeah. actual any encounters physically with Joel. Them. If you see something that swoops at your car that's got a wingspan as wide as the freeway, you realize it probably wouldn't have to uh, beat you up. It probably no, no, no. I, I'm you'd be gone. It was kind of a question it's... and a statement all at once. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone that's been attacked by these in Chicago? I don't think so. Not that we know of. Let's put okay. it that way. There, there. I'll just be direct uh, with the you question. You know, I did have I did have an encounter years before this started to get hot and heavy of a um, of a couple where the the woman was actually attacked in her car through the windshield, you know, through the side window, and this mm-hmm. thing put a pretty good laceration on her back. Really? Uh, but other than that, and that kind of came third hand, it came from her, her son's friend who this woman told the, the story to, uh, sure. interesting though, these, these, these people were Navajo. They had just moved to Chicago from the reservation about a year before that. And, uh, yeah, this thing was following them home and it, uh, it literally attacked her. Yeah. See, that's thanks. Thanks, Lon. <laughs> that could have been you, Doug. That could have huh? been you had you had a convertible. Oh my gosh! That's like... <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, I, when when, when what? What was going on in 2017, it was interesting because I tell you, the Mothman prophecies didn't help me at all with this because people knew of the the Silver Bridge collapse and just assumed yeah. that, that was a harbinger and this thing was the. The reason for it being a harbinger, and that's why things happened the way they did. And I literally, I'd say in July and August of 2017, I was getting phone calls 24-7 from people just in and around Chicago, not witnesses, who were calling me and saying, hey, I'm hearing about this. What the hell is going to happen in Chicago? Are yeah, we safe? Right. right. Yeah. You know, well, I don't know what I hey, can Joe, tell you. Hey, Joe, you know? we're talking about that before, the, before you came on, Lon. What if something really bad happens in Chicago? Uh, I guess people will be calling me. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, I hope, hope it doesn't happen, but, you know. Well, the area that we saw the the Mothman on 35W got wiped out by a flood that happened just weeks after. Is that right? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. The bridges got wiped. It was a 100-year flood. Bridges got wiped out. Um Tons of homes were destroyed, and the bridge that we saw this thing near was completely missing. Mm. So there you go. Well, yeah. you know, I'm not saying it, it, it can't happen in some instances, but, you know, I don't really buy into this harbinger thing. And, um, you know, well, they're, they're, I interviewed a guy, one of the people I interviewed for um, uh, Monster Quest, I believe, saw it on the 35W bridge. And that was before the collapse. Mm. And once again, that bridge just kind of disappeared on us. Yeah. Yeah. I remember hearing other people this say that they saw something strange. Thing. We didn't, you know, he just said it was sitting on the bridge. That's where he saw it. Mm. Standing or whatever, perched on the bridge. Yeah. So you do wonder. You yeah, know? you do wonder. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to come right out of hand and tell people that, well, you know, I don't believe, you know, I don't really believe it. I'm not going to say it isn't going to happen, but. Yeah, no, uh, I hear you. I, uh, I hear you. I, you know, I, I early on, I did, I did make the mistake of saying talking about the harbinger theory and you know connecting what happened at Point Pleasant, right. and I really regretted doing that because I was really getting a lot of flack about that. But as I looked into it and and thought about it, I, I, you know, and I 
even stated in the, my first book. I should have mm-hmm. never said that. But um, well, I guess you know, I, I, I'm regretting saying it too. I was just concerned, is all. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, I'm just saying it out of concern, not out of thinking yeah. it's going to happen. Um, yeah. There's obviously been many sightings where nothing has happened, and it's just all that all could be coincidences. Sure. Yeah, it's freaky. It, it 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 is freaky. And think of all the people that were connected to Mothman that died under weird circumstances. Thanks, Joel. Well, it is. Rita, I think Lauren Coleman, your buddy Lauren, he wrote a book all about that. People that were connected you with know, Mothman. The, the the Mothman at Point Pleasant. The curse of Mothman. I think that was a summoned being. Now, when I say summoned being, you know, I've been to Point Pleasant a lot. I've done a lot of work around the old West Virginia Ordnance Works, or what people call the TNT plant. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of energy there. You know, I, I pick up I pick up really strong energy every time I go there. I've heard some EVPs that come out of that place are just literally unbelievable. I believe back when this these sightings started in the late 60s, 66, that area was a uh, was a teenage young adult hangout. You know, yeah. people people in the town were hanging out and partying and whatever sure. out there. And I believe that this energy, and I believe it's an indigenous energy because, you know, a lot of these tribes moved in and out of that area. There was a lot of warring years and years ago between tribes, between settlers. You know, there was mm-hmm. a lot to happen on that area. I, I believe that the Mothman or what people call the Mothman was actually a summoned being by this by this entity and uh, as a sentinel or a guardian of some type. And I believe that's what it was there for. I believe it was there to scare off whoever showed up around that TNT plant. Mm, that's interesting, Terry. To the yeah, but did any of the workers back up, though? I mean, it was a factory before then. Did any of mm-hmm. the workers ever say, hey, there's anything something weird around here? Well, you know, that factory had shut down not long after World War II ended. And, yeah. um, you know, I don't know of any sightings by anybody that had been working there at the time. Now, why that is i don't know i mean yeah. of course the, the land itself if it you know if it had that strong energy it had always been there for whatever reason you know there, there's a lot of theories about how these things show up uh, around uh, places where there's uh munitions factories and associated with death and this and that and you know mm-hmm. that could have been the case i don't know but I, I i really do believe that there was a um that there, this thing was summoned now, I don't hmm. know if there's a summoning that's going on w- within Chicago. You know, yeah. th- there's another interesting thing that happened. Hey, guys, we're using Poshmark, and you should, too. Do you have things that you don't wear anymore? Poshmark is seriously the easiest way to make room in your closet, make some cash, and also snag a bargain. It's the coolest reseller with the best brands like Lululemon, Nike Reformation, and Gucci for up to 70% off. DJ Khaled has a closet and Serena Williams. Download the app today. Enter Podcast 10 when you sign up for $10 off your first purchase on Poshmark. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Fermi Labs that are out in Cook County. Mm-hmm. Uh, Isn't had, that, that they're trying to catch um, some kind of, you know, subatomic particle? Yeah, particle accelerator. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, actually that Fermilab accelerator was the first one ever built. And it was the oldest. It was about, well, they did, they, sh- they supposedly shut it down around 2011, 2012. And of course, these, the sightings, there's three sightings in 2011 make that a little interesting, but there was supposed to be an accident. Now, mm-hmm. they've never really gone into detail what the accident was. Um, but all we ever heard was that they shut this place down. Now, in recent, in the last year or so, they ha- they have been have they've been working there. They've been putting equipment in there. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been in the news. They, they've you know they started this thing back <clears throat> up with whatever they were doing. Uh, I don't know what what it is, but I uh, I don't know. I mean, can you describe the Fermi Lab? I mean, it's quite a huge place. Yeah, it is. It's uh, out in Cook County. It's um. It's it's a it is a large facility. I have literally had some people 
stake that place out just to see what was going in and out there a couple of times. Uh, it, you know, it was supposed to be shut down for that period of time, but people were going in and out a lot. So I don't know if it was because of the accelerator or other work they were doing there, but uh, there was activity there. So I, I, I really don't know. Uh, did this thing opening a riff up? You know, everybody talks about CERN and the, the possibly opening up a rift in between dimensions or doing something. I don't know. Is that possible? Maybe. Well, you know what's so weird about CERN um, is all of the symbology mm-hmm. that's associated with that place. Oh, it's yeah. right. it's real. I mean, they really they really use certain symbology that's quite scary. Yeah. And why? Why for a, a you know a scientific lab would you use uh, Luc- Luciferian type symbology? <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it's interesting, and uh, you know, th- there's no real good answers why that is. And there's a lot of speculation about CERN and um, and uh, the whole the whole concept of particle acceleration. Anyway, it's um, you know there's. You know, people, you know, I think a lot when people saw the uh, the Da Vinci Code thing uh, movie that concerned the Porto Accelerator and the antimatter development and all that, that mm-hmm. really freaked a lot of people out. Well, and of course, for, that for movie had a, lot, had a lot of Illuminati, you know, yeah. uh, involvement in the story itself. So, you know, Dan Brown was kind of putting all that together there. So I don't know if that kind of sparked something. I I. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I've been thinking also, you know, quantum computing is is going to start getting to be mainstream. Yeah. You know, you can buy a quantum computer at a, I'm not going to say an affordable price, but it's on the, it's on a consumer level now. Yeah. But eventually it's going to be like everything else. It's going to be affordable to the general public. Now, What's going to happen when people start getting a hold of that technology and using, or, or is it going to be something that we learn from, or is it going to be something that's going to cause something bad? We don't know. We really don't know. So maybe we'll get some answers if it happens, but then again, maybe we get answers we don't want to get. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's any one of these topics, Lon, we could, t- we could talk about quantum computing for like 12 shows. It's oh, yeah. just weird. Everything is just getting weird. Um, what what did you think about the Norway spiral near CERN? Did you think that was a, a, a wayward Russian rocket or did you think that was something I else? I doubt it. I, I doubt that was a rocket. You know, I, 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 have ne- I have always said that I don't believe that was a rocket. There was something behind that God. other than that. So, uh, and it's not the only time that's happened. It's happened before. And since then, um, something similar to that's showing up and being, is, is it something to do with CERN? Is it something to do with that type of technology? Yeah. Who knows? You know, we're, we only know what they're telling us. Yeah, if anybody hadn't seen the Norway spiral, look it up. It's Watch the video. There's actually mm-hmm. video of it. It's amazing. Jeez, Louise. This is long. I'm looking at all this stuff you guys are talking about CERN and the strange stuff that's going on with that man there's something to that well there's that a guy really that weird. i know there's a guy that i know he said hey would you like to have somebody from cern come on your show and i'm like yeah mm-hmm. so yeah I'm, but can we talk to him about all the high strangeness like i don't know hey I, why do you have devil worshiping crap hanging around <laughs> <laughs> you know being a when you're an investigator nowadays it's it's not like it was years and years ago you gotta really you gotta really step out you know, yeah, the, the box rabbit and, hole's yeah. bigger. The rabbit yeah. hole is much bigger nowadays. Yeah, and um, you, but you know, I think investigators get more pushback than what they used to. Too, I have had pushback for mm-hmm. years about a lot of different things. I'd get into something and start looking at something, and then I get a visitor at the door saying, "You know, we'd appreciate it if you'd um, if you back off on this." Really, well, I'm not going to argue with them. Have you had that kind of stuff happen? Three times. Three times. Can you? I will tell you. Seven minutes. We've got seven minutes. Go I ahead. I will tell you the last time. There was a gentleman out in Western Maryland who was calling me and calling his Congress people and bugging the living crap out of everybody that he had government officials 
digging tunnels under his land and all this stuff. Now, I will grant the guy had a lot of weird stuff going on. I had no proof of what was going on, but I was looking into it. So I was conferring with a few people about it. So that was going on for about six months. And I'll be honest with you, this guy, he just bugged me every day, every day. You found this, you found that. You got new information. Okay. Well, I'm writing this person. I'm writing that person. Okay. So I went to my doctor's office one day. I had an appointment, went to the doctor's office, went into the weight. Well, I was in the weight room, went back into the examination room, and I'm sitting there. And there's a knock on the door, and the nurse comes in and said, Mr. Strickler, um, you got two visitors out in the waiting room. What? Who are they? Said they, they wouldn't tell me. They didn't they talk to you, and we can't bring them back here. Okay. See, so, right now, stop one. This would be a perfect <laughs> time for a commercial break. <laughs> but hold our viewers forever. We could hold them for like an hour to yeah. hear the rest dun, of the Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, Juan. Yeah. Uh, so. Break. I get up, walk out to the the, the um, waiting room, and the waiting room is full of people. And these two people are standing in the middle of the waiting room. It's a man and a woman. Uh, she had a dress skirt and everything on. He was in a suit. They flashed the badge at me as soon as I walked to him. Mr. Strickler, here comes the NSA identification out. We'd like to talk to you about something. Uh, we have an office secured across the hall. Could you follow us? So that's what I did. And they had this office all set up and we got in there. We sat down and I asked them, well, what's going on? Well, Mr. So-and-so has been really causing a problem within the agency and, and other parts of the government. We don't know anything about this guy, what his intentions are, but we would like you to back off from this case. And I had not been reporting much at all. Yeah. But something struck a nerve so you know i got two eight two people from the nsa sitting there in an office talking to me asking me to back off i'm gonna back off i'm not gonna do that you know so i told the guy next day i'm done i am absolutely done with this and that's happened before uh Jeez, you know in, in no other way, circumstances yeah. but that was probably the most dramatic one following me going following me up in my doctor's office gosh yeah, so, yeah, that was a bit scary, so. Especially when they could have just called you at home. Yeah, right? Give me a call, then, like, hey, long. Pretty dramatic. <laughs> yeah. That's really right. dramatic. So, like yeah, no that, was, uh, that was pretty strange, but uh, I, got the, I got the point, so I just backed off. And, of course, I've had people tell me, well, God, you must have been crazy. You must have kept, you should have kept going. Ah, uh, no. So and, was the guy totally just, you know, was he, do you think there was legit stuff he was dealing with? Or? I don't know. I know the guy ended up in prison a couple of years later for oh, some type of uh, assault charge. I don't know. You know, he was there for a couple of years and he was out. So yeah. I, I, oh, I don't know what the whole Change the subject. Was. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what he did. I, I don't care what he did. That's not my problem. Just so he doesn't yeah. talk to me anymore. Have you Jeez. have you ever heard of anybody with a Mothman encounter that got nauseated or yeah. just physically ill? Yeah, yeah. They, they there have been people that have gotten that nauseous feeling occasionally. You know, I've heard of other cryptid reports where, you know, like I said before, I don't know if they use a type of infrasound or whatever they use to kind of yeah get people to back off and such. Uh, but it does happen. And sometimes they do report that they are somewhat nauseated or dizzy. Uh, they lose a bit of control of themselves. So yeah, it happens. Jeez, man. Yeah. Does anyone have you ever heard, had a report of them shooting at one? Yeah. I mean, people, you know what I have never, and I have talked to hunters who've encountered things like this, uh, especially upright canines, large upright canines on two legs, you know, that stand their yeah. ground. You got a guy walking, not not guys using shotguns that are in upland hunting, but guys that got deer rifles. They won't even shoot it. You know, they you know they don't know what the hell they're they're, they're shooting something, but they're not you know they're not going to shoot yeah. it. Yes, that, that is, is true. Well, what's your take on this dogman phenomenon that's going on? It's very similar to the Mothman, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's like you, a it's like a, the land Mothman version without we've wings. Been, uh, we've been following this in Pennsylvania for the most part. 
Uh, yeah. My, my partner, I Butch Wachowski, and I have been g- taking documentation of sightings. And it goes back a long way. I mean, a, a lot of this goes back when a lot of these uh, farmers from the old country came over here. And, you know, they had their the werewolf lore and all that other stuff. And, you know, I don't know if that permeated much of this. But I tell you, some of the sightings people have had, encounters they've had, they're damn real. They really are. I mean, you know, and we've had several. I think at this point right now, since 2013, I think Butch and I have probably taken at least 23 sightings. But those are sightings that we believe are are valid sightings. Oh. And it, it's mostly around central Pennsylvania. Yeah, um, dogman stuff. That's crazy. Is there, is there, so the only common denominator I can find with dogman is cornfields. They they do like to hang around fields. <laughs> they do and out in the open. They do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But a lot of times they like to hang around in protected areas as well. You know, Pennsylvania's got a lot of state forest and uh, state game lands. I know we've had a lot of sightings in the state game lands. Jeez. Well, I, what, I guess what I meant, Juan, is there's cornfields nearby. They're not seen in cornfields. Usually they're seen in the forest. Yeah. There seems to always be a cornfield yeah. somewhere nearby. Well, you know, that, yeah, that and that, that may be. because, But Pennsylvania is, is well known for a lot of agriculture that goes right up against yeah. forest. Yeah. You, know, you know, Pennsylvania is, that is, is true. still has that is like true. 49% forested yet. Uh, there's a lot of wilderness out there. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah, I used to uh, I used to work in Pennsylvania, and um, I loved coming there. It's just great yeah. people. Um, the, the the only thing bad about Pennsylvania, if you missed your exit on the freeway, yeah, you're sure. going to go ten or twenty you miles. Got a you got drive ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's Pennsylvania. But no, it's a weird. Oh state. man, it re- it is a weird state. I mean, you know, it, it is odd. Pennsylvania yeah. is an odd state. It's a hot bit of paranormal activity. That's for damn sure. Lon, we're running out of time. Why don't you tell people how they can get a hold of you with your website, how they can re- uh, send you their own report, stuff like that. Oh yeah, they can uh, go to phantomsandmonsters dot com. They can call me. At 410-241-5974. It's on the website. Uh, Lon Strickler, phantomsandmonsters.com. You got a report to send it to me. We appreciate it. Um, our team is the uh, Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team. Our reports go up onto the blog and also up onto cryptidhunters.org. I've got several books for sale, uh, all on Amazon. All coming through uh, Beyond the Fray Publishing. We republished everything recently with new covers and uh, a little bit of new content. And I'm actually involved in writing another book now, which talks about the uh, the pale crawling and walker humanoid thing a phenomena that's has gotten big in the past couple of years. And what's that People called? Don't understand it, but that's the rake or the crawler. Or? Yeah, they got all kinds of names. I'm yeah. I'm trying to get away from the the creepy pasta part of it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's Slender Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It's been great talking to you, Lon. Always is, and and uh, as always, time goes by way too fast. Uh, we didn't even get that. to really touch on anything else. Would have liked to have. We'll have you back on though. Well, I appreciate we'll have you back that. on real soon. We're out of here, man. Doug, it's the the end of another show. Boy, does it, like I said, it just keeps on going so fast, doesn't it? Yep. Well, this is Joel, me, of course. Doug over there, we're signing off. We're out of here, guys. Take care of each other, love each other. Hey, keep looking for that moth, man. If you do see him, ask him why he's so damn creepy. I just want to know. shopping online. Well, I'm going to tell you what I tell my golf buddies when they buy clubs. Stop searching for coupon codes. Download Capital One Shopping to your computer. Capital One Shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them at checkout. Plus, it's free, and you don't even need a Capital One card to use it. That's like hitting a hole in one without even trying. Capital One Shopping. It's kind of genius. What's in your wallet? Savings and available coupons vary. 
This is UCARE's Health Plans Decomplicated, where we ride our team bike and answer health plan questions simply. With us again is UCARE's Franny. Ready? I'm all set. Are UCARE's documents available in Spanish for my mom? Absolutely, and if she calls customer service, we can get her an interpreter there too, and we have interpreters for over 200 languages. Gracias, Franny. Talk to one of our plan decomplicators today. You care. People-powered health plans. Nice bike, by the way. Aw, thanks. <laughs>